a happy, happy Lord's Day to everyone. So it's great to be with you all in this morning as we worship the Lord. So I'd like to begin by reading God's Word. So please turn with me to 2 Timothy chapter 1. 2 Timothy chapter 1. And for this morning, we will be looking at verses 8 to 14. 2 Timothy chapter 1, verses 8 to 14, and I will be reading from the English Standard Version. So give attention now to the reading of God's inerrant and infallible word. Therefore, do not be ashamed of the testimony about our Lord, nor of me, his prisoner, but share in suffering for the gospel by the power of God, who saved us. And called us to a holy calling, not because of our works, but because of his own purpose and grace, which he gave us in Christ Jesus before the ages began, and which now has been manifested through the appearing of our Savior, Christ Jesus, who abolished death and brought life and immortality to light through the gospel, for which I was appointed a preacher and apostle and teacher, which is why I suffer as I do. But I am not ashamed, for I know whom I have believed, and I am convinced that he is able to guard until that day what has been entrusted to me. Follow the pattern of the sound words that you have heard from me in the faith and love that are in Christ Jesus, by the Holy Spirit who dwells within us, Guard the good deposit entrusted to you. Let us all come before the Lord in prayer. May you find us faithful, O God, as we carry out our mission to bring the gospel to the world. Lord, you have called us to, to be a witness, to be a steward of this message of salvation. May we not shrink back May we not be ashamed of this very message that has saved our souls from the eternal damnation because of our sins. And, O oh Lord, may it be so now that your Spirit would be our teacher for this morning as we consider your words. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Some of you might know and have enjoyed listening to the artist by the name of Phil Collins. Um, he became popular in the early 80s all the way to the 90s. He is responsible for some songs that are entitled Another Day in Paradise or One More Night. And if you are someone na nakapanood ng Tarzan na ginawa ng Disney, you would know that he was the one who sang the original soundtrack that is You Will Be In My Heart. And one of the singles that really became popular and was covered by other artists as well was Against All Odds. In the song, he is addressing his lover that suddenly left him. And he's simply asking, why? Bakit mo ko iniwan? And he reminds her of the things that they've shared in the relationship, describes the impact it left in his life, dun sa pagalis niya. And despite the fact that chances are, hindi na sila magkakabalikan, he will persist. Sabi niya, that he will be standing there and he will wait for her to come back. God has given a sacred trust to His church. We are called to become a pillar and buttress of the truth, which means that it is our responsibility to declare and to defend the gospel. And in this mission that God has given us, while there are adversities, there are opposition, there will be challenges in the ministries, we are commanded to persist against all odds. We've been well acquainted for the past two sermons that Paul wrote this letter in prison. And this is his second Roman imprisonment. It was sometime around 65 to 67 AD, wherein the Christians are greatly persecuted. But this time, things are quite different as compared to the first imprisonment. During the first Roman incarceration, naka house arrest si uh, Apostle Paul. He can receive yes, pwede niya kausapin concerning the gospel. But this time, he knows that this is it. Alam niya that he is on death row and perhaps he has received the sentence that he will be 
dying as a martyr for Christ. And now, he is writing this letter to Timothy, instructs, giving him some instruction na dalin yung mga, yung mga bagay na kailangan niya in, in prison, and as it were, to give his last will and testament to his beloved child in the faith. And in this section that we are looking at, we, we would also learn that he is writing to Timothy to encourage him to be faithful in his charge, to endure hardship for the sake of the gospel along with the Apostle Paul. Why? Tatanungin natin, bakit niya kailangan ni encourage si Timothy? Because there are challenges threatening the gospel. It is true for both the Apostle Paul and Timothy in their time. It is also true for us at present that there will be critics of Christianity wherein sasabihin nila that you should be ashamed of the gospel. Kailangan hindi mo yan ipinaglalaban. Bakit ka maniniwala sa isang savior na namatay? That is just foolishness. And that is basically yun yung, yun yung uh, kinakounter din ni Apostle Paul in 1 Corinthians that they are saying na it's foolishness. Kaya nga sabi ni Paul doon that it is foolishness to those who are perishing. But to those who are being saved, it is the power of God. The voices would always question the reliability and truthfulness of Scripture. They would undermine the person and the work of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. And if we will give in to the voices and the hardships that we will be encountering in the ministry, it will affect the mission of the church. It will affect the progress of the gospel. And not to mention, there are real challenges that you and I are facing personally because of our faith in Christ. We experience that in various forms of persecution, whether minor or major. Lahat tayo nakaka-experience that, nakaka-experience nun in one level or the other. And as a church, it would help us also to know that we can be pre- prepared when it comes. And when it comes, willingly suffer for the gospel amid opposition. That is my message to you, brothers and sisters, for this morning. Willingly suffer for the gospel amid persecution. When the church and its message is are threatened by the, by the enemies of the gospel, we must ready to bear reproach in the name of Christ and taking a bold stand for the gospel and suffering for it. Now, what should we be prepared for? Ano ba dapat ang kailangan natin paghandaan? That will be the first point. Let us consider the odds. Considering the odds. And how do we carry on with our mission? We will talk about that in the second point, conquering the odds. So, two things. We will be looking at the first one, considering the odds. So, aside from having a timid character, si Timothy, sinasabi nga doon na medyo kulang siya ng courage, hindi siya ganun ka-bold, ka meron siyang timid disposition. The Apostle Paul also knows that there are difficulties facing Timothy. These are challenges that are coming from all fronts, whether external or internal. Externally, Christians are being persecuted. Nauna na ang kanyang father in the faith na nasa prison ngayon. And to make matters worse, if he associate himself, uh, uh, himself to a prisoner, pwedeng maging maka-endanger sa kanya yon. And others have already turned away from the Apostle Paul. Kaya sabi niya in chapter 4 verse 16 that at his first defense, no one came to stand by him but all deserted him. And by continuing in the ministry, he can be considered as a rebel of the Roman government because of the message that he preaches. Which means that if he does the same thing, he can suffer the same thing as the Apostle Paul. Now, what about the church? Pinag-usapan natin sa, sa First Timothy that Paul wrote to him to deal with the problems in the church. So, John, an- ano nangyari doon? What happened there? Based on what we see in chapter 2, well, nandun pa rin yung Paul's teachings, nandun pa rin yung mga Paul's teachers, prevalent pa rin sila within the church of Ephesus, and Paul warns that it's not going to get better. It will be much worse. And if you are Timothy, experiencing all these things, it's not easy 
it's taxing. In fact, pwede ka ma-discourage. You can just give up. Tama na ito. Fear from within because people are undermining his authority as the pastor of the church. Fear from without because pro proclaiming the gospel can be a threat para ikaw ay ma-persecute. Therefore, his welfare and his life is on the line. And he can, he can just be tempted and say na, enough. Tama na ito. I want us to acknowledge that in our, lives, in our life as a church and in our ministry, believers and their message breed opposition. <clears throat> so, madaling salita, asahan niyo na yan. Asahan niyo na that they, there will be opposition against you and the message that you carry. Don't get me wrong, the gospel that we bring to the world is a gospel of peace. Sinasabi natin doon, God saves sinners. But because of man's corruption, because the, um, the, the fallenness of man, it can be an offense or a stumbling block para sa ibang hearers ng ating message. There is a cliche na sinasabi doon na you cannot please everyone. That is normally being used when there is one out of ten people who would negatively criticize their work. So for example, nagluto ka ng malupit na recipe ni nanay. Pinatikin mo sa nine person, sinabi sa'yo, uy, ang sarap, panahalo to. Pero sasabihin, sasabihin sa'yo ng kaisa-isang tao na yon. out of those ten persons na pinatikin mo ng luto ni nanay, hmm, maalat naman eh. In our ministry, we would not just receive criticism. Our message could be rejected we could be treated unjustly. In other words, we may need to endure hardship for the sake of the gospel. Why? Bakit, bakit, tayo na, bakit natin kailangan mag-endure at times for the sake of the gospel? Consider the effect on the, upon the unregenerate person. You will be proclaiming to him a message that tells him that God is holy. You will be telling them that you are sinners and you are lawbreakers. That uh, the Ten Commandments, binreak mo lahat yun. That because of that, because, the, because of the fact that you are a sinner, by essence and by practice, God's wrath and holy anger is upon you. And that the only way that you can be saved from your sins is to place your faith in the Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, who came into this world to save sinners by His perfect life and sacrificial death on the cross. And you can be assured because he rose from the dead. And now you urge them to repent of their sins and place their trust in Jesus Christ. It challenges their understanding. It challenges their per perception of who God is and about themselves. This could hurt their pride. We can be labeled with all sorts of things. Sabi nila, intolerant tayo. Tayo yung mga exclusivists. Tayo yung mga bigot or even, gagamit pa sila ng mga blasphemous words to consider us or to even mock our profession of faith. They could do these things and put us into a disadvantage, affect our welfare, and cost our livelihood. And we can be tempted to be ashamed of the gospel. And that is why Paul urges Timothy do not be ashamed of the gospel. And also, to me, as his prisoner. And nakakatawa lang doon because sinabi niya doon, I'm not a prisoner of Rome. Wala akong crime na ginawa. I am not an insurrectionist, gaya na sinasabi nila. But I'm a prisoner for the Lord in order to proclaim the gospel. And if you are tempted to back out and to turn away from our responsibility, and to not share the gospel alone for the sake of our safety, consider this, brothers and sisters. What we suffer pales in comparison to what the Savior has suffered. Being our Redeemer, He had to endure the greatest humiliation by the time He came into this world up until His death. He is the infinite one, being God Himself, became finite. The one who is incorruptible has been subject to corruption. And he humbled himself up to the point 
of death, even death on the cross. For what reason? For us and for our salvation. Marvel on that great condescension of our Lord for our sake. And if you are someone who is not yet in Christ, I plead with you this morning, turn away from your sins. Whatever I said earlier is true concerning what God has revealed in His Word. God is holy. We are sinners. Your only hope is Christ. Turn away from sin and place your faith in Him. And so, brethren, Christ has promised that He will be with His church until the, the very end of the age. That the gospel we proclaim is not just a novel news na, na naging sikat lang um, in comparison to the ideologies of the world, which aims to merely inform and incite interest, but this is the power of God. And so do not be ashamed of the gospel. Do not be ashamed of the gospel. That is my challenge for you, brothers and sisters. Verses 6 to 7 tells us that God has been gracious to give us the Holy Spirit not to be cowards, not to, to shrink back into fear, but to have power, love, and self-control. That is to be bold and courageous and effective, enduring, patient, and loving towards those who are opposing us and the message. God has given us exactly what we need. He has equipped us so that we can fulfill the mission that He has given us. Pero yung problema is that Minsan ayaw natin ng conflict. Sometimes we just want to avoid it because we are afraid of it. We're more concerned about other people's impression. Ano kaya yung sasabihin niya about sa akin? Ma-offend kaya siya? Or kapag ginawa ko ba to, baka hindi niya na ako itreat ng mabuti. We are also looking after our own security. And because of it, some Christians would fall into the error of altering the message all Together, they're no longer preaching about sin kasi baka maka-offend. They want to avoid persecution, simply saying that God loves everyone unconditionally at pwede ka na mabuhay ng, ng kahit papano mo gusto. And when you preach that message, of course, you will draw a crowd. Pwede ka magkaroon ng TV show or radio, radio portion just because of telling that God loves everyone unconditionally. They will like you. They will say, Eh, gusto ko preacher na to kasi I can be myself. I can live the way I want. Dito, walang judgmental. Hindi ako na-judge. And that is, that's no good news, brothers and sisters. Take a bold stand in the true gospel that was given to us in His Word. This is the stewardship that God has given us. Be faithful in setting forth the holiness of God that his eyes are too pure to behold evil, the sinfulness of man, the salvation by faith in Jesus Christ alone, calling them unto repentance and faith, even if it costs you. In your family, some family members can despise us because of, because of the fact that we are Christians. Friends can turn away from us. In school, medyo mahirapan tayong i-uphold ang ating conviction. In the workplace, baka hindi ka na nila isama sa inyong mga lunch out dahil ikaw ay um, alive-alive yung sinasabi nila. You can be alienated by your colleagues and in society, they can limit our freedom to worship. And in all these, if we experience it in one way or the other, remember that God is with us. He will strengthen us so that we can endure, persevere, and be patient when trial comes. One of the greatest challenges that was faced by Charles Spurgeon up until his death was the downgrade controversy. So pinangalan siya sa, in downgrade controversy, pinangalan niya sa mga articles na pinublish sa kanyang monthly magazine na The Sword and the Trowel. And yung problem during that time is that some ministers were veering away from orthodoxy. Sinasabi nila, hindi naman daw Diyos si Jesus Christ. And they are denying the substitutionary atonement that was, uh, that was done by Jesus Christ. Not to mention, false teachings were on the rise. 
worldliness is being espoused. Sermons were becoming speculative rather than spiritual. Moralism is gaining popularity. At yung mga preaching at that time, nagiging Christless na. And unfortunately, the Baptist Union, where Charles Spurgeon is part of, naga problema rin. They suffered with the same crisis. And his colleague, yun ang sulat ng nung article na the downgrade, si Robert Schindler, sabi niya, he rightly observed na, na dito sa, sa the downgrade, that the root cause of this crisis is the departure from the sufficiency of Scripture, biblical Christianity, and the true gospel. The same thing could happen, mga kapatid, if we fail to prepare ourselves from opposition and turn our backs away from preaching the true gospel, from trusting the sufficiency of Scripture, and upholding sound doctrine. So mga kapatid, do not be ashamed of the gospel. And if we are not ashamed of the gospel, how do we carry on with this mission? That's my second point, conquering the odds. We've looked at the difficulties that are facing Timothy, and Paul now appeals to him that he will not abandon his duties. Instead, he must courageously persist. Sinabi niya sa verse 8, Therefore, do not be ashamed of the testimony about our Lord, nor of me, his prisoner, but share in suffering for the gospel by the power of God. Timothy, don't back down. Do not shrink back on your responsibility. Declare the gospel. And do not be ashamed if, on being associated with me. Rather, suffer with me. Endure hardship for the sake of the gospel. Pero siyempre, hindi lang yung binigay ni Apostle Paul as a plain command for Timothy to do. We ask the question, what would drive Timothy to persevere? Well, we can say that we understand that he's been given the task to proclaim the gospel. Tama naman yun. He's been specially called for the ministry. Okay. But what would impel him to take action? And this is where Paul grounds his appeal to Timothy upon the grace of God. Maikita natin sa verses 9 to 11. God who saved us and called us to a holy calling, not because of works, not because of our works, but because of his own purpose and grace, which he gave us in Christ Jesus before the ages began, and which has now been manifested through the appearing of our Savior, Christ Jesus, who abolished death and brought life and immortality to light through the gospel. His intention was to remind Timothy that God empowers his people for the cause of Christ. In fact, God himself is the one guarding, the one that is entrusted upon the church. Sinabi niya in verse 12, because of God's grace, he suffers as he does. He is not ashamed. Why? Because for I know whom I have believed. And I am convinced that he is able to guard until that day what has been entrusted to me. The cause of Christ involves the proclamation of the gospel of Christ, bearing reproach in his name, defending and guarding the truth from error. And in this mission, we are not to change the message for the people. Instead, we seek by the power of God to change the people through the message of the gospel faithfully delivered. If you're employed by a company, so let's say uh, isa kang empleyado, you will be given tools of the trade. And the purpose of these tools is to, is to make you productive para sa inyong uh, role or designation within the company. So for example, bibigyan ka ng mga mobile device Bibigyan ka ng desktop so that you can work on some graphics if you are a gra graphic artist. Or let's say sales ka naman, bibigyan ka ng sasakyan or any kind of allowances that would support your, your work. To make us fruitful as a church, God empowers us through His grace in the gospel. Tatanong niya sa akin, in what way? Out of His great love for us, ipinaalala niya Apostle Paul that the Father saves us and sets us apart for Himself. 
we enjoy the benefits of salvation in Christ. That Christ came into this world who died as a substitute for sinners. Hence, death is powerless and we gain eternal life because of his finished work through faith in him. And if that wasn't enough, God gave us his Holy Spirit to be in us and with us to be the guarantee of our inheritance through him to convict us and comfort us through his word and to strengthen us for service unto him so that when we suffer for the sake of the gospel, we can persevere with great boldness, no longer fearing death, being patient toward those who are opposing our message. And by his grace that is found in the gospel, Paul himself receives strength as a preacher, teacher, and an apostle. And that is why he was willing to suffer shamelessly for the sake of Christ. And he's telling Timothy, do this in the same way. Look upon the grace of God and willingly suffer shame for the sake of the gospel. And we can do so tayo din, dahil his grace is sufficient for us. Therefore, brothers and sisters, my last challenge is depend on the sufficiency of God's grace. The gospel not only shows what Christ has done on behalf of us sinners, but he is also showing us what he can do. Pinapakita rin niya sa atin ang kanyang character. But in spite of this, we tend to forget. We depend on our own ability instead of relying on the grace of God. We want to take matters into our own hands at times. And the problem, we, we see this in the modern evangelical church. Aside from measuring success by numbers, they consider the gospel as a product which needs to be effectively marketed to the consumers. Or else, they're gonna lose against the world. Matatalo tayo, hindi magiging mabenta ang ating produkto. So anong kailangan natin gawin? Magmimit yung mga board of elders? Marketing. Let's do marketing. Make it catchy for our audience. Package it nicely to our consumers so that they themselves would enjoy it. They would feel good. They're gonna experience God that they have never experienced before. Tapos, so worship, palitan natin yung music. It shouldn't be too churchy. Baka maturn off sila. They're gonna have a new church department and office na worship experience. And they're gonna make the message palatable or acceptable. And when the church does that, shortly, they're gonna see that the gospel is the problem. Hindi na magmamatch ang gospel doon sa kanilang idinadrive. And once it is ruled out, that the gospel is the problem, they're gonna adjust the message or tatanggalin na lang nila yung gospel. Pwede lang i-mention si Jesus, si God, pero wala na yung gospel, wala na yung comfort. They have then become ashamed of the gospel. What is depending on God's sufficiency? It is trusting that the faithful proclamation of the gospel is the means by which God is drawing sinners to the Savior. And it is the means by which he is building up tayo, tayo mga believers, not in man-made methodologies. It is banking on the strength of God for us to endure as trials come against us in our ministry and our message. Pero yung tanong ko sa inyo, if you believe that God is sufficient, you may have even quoted the Apostle Paul before in 2 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 9, that my grace is sufficient for you, for power is made perfect in weakness, how are you reminding yourself of it? Pero let's step back a little bit, John. How do I remind myself of the gospel? Of course, lagi tinuturo sa atin, the means of grace. Reading our Bible, spending time in prayer, reminding yourself of the gospel that we have read from the scripture, being under the faithful preaching of the word of God, and being with like-minded believers who would point you to the Lord Jesus Christ. But let me just add to that. I understand that we are holding to the doctrines of grace or your five points of 
Calvinism. Hindi natin siya hinuhold simply just a faith, as a papal summary or a theological position to distinguish ourselves from the Armenians, while it certainly does that as well. Rather, I want us to reflect then on its implication. Isa-isa natin, you were born here in this world, corrupted by sin, total depravity, but the mercies and grace of God, He shows you in Him, according to the counsel of His own will, to be holy and blameless before Him. Unconditional election. Christ died and definitely atoned for your sins, past, present, and future. Definite atonement. And through the Holy Spirit, He effectually called you through the preaching of the gospel. Effectual calling. And being in Him, you are preserved for you to persevere up until the end. Preservation of the saints. And on the basis of these realities, be not afraid to sh suffer shame for the sake of the gospel. See, see George Wishart, I'm not sure if you heard of him before. He is the discipler of John Knox. He is a Protestant reformer. He gave his life to the preaching of the gospel and held on to the reformed doctrines wherein the papacy has found as a threat. At the tail end of his life, he was apprehended and was put on trial. 18 exhibits were presented before the, before the council. Pero in observed ng isang witness during that time that Mr. Wizard answered the articles with great composure in mind. In a learned and clear manner. And it surprised yung mga, yung mga present during that trial. And after being examined, the archbishop during that time urged him to, to recant. But according to, to the account, he was too firmly fixed on the religious principles that he is hold, holding on to and too much enlightened with the truth of the gospel to be in the least moved. So para siya si Luther, na sinabi niyang, here I stand. And soon after, he was led to be executed. He was burned at the stake. Pero before mangyari yun, narinig siya ng ibang mga witnesses. At nakita that he fell on his knees. Sinabi niya at nagpray siya, O thou Savior of the world, have mercy upon me, Father of heaven. I commend my spirit into thy holy hands. He also prayed for his accusers during that time. I beseech thee, Father of heaven, forgive them that have from ignorance and an evil mind, forge lies against me. I forgive them with all my heart. I beseech Christ to forgive them that have ignorantly condemned me. George Wishart depended on the sufficiency of God's grace to receive him up until the end of his life. That by his grace, God enabled him not only to stand boldly for the gospel, Iniwan niya yung kanyang education para mag-preach ng gospel, but also to reflect the love of Christ towards those who condemned him. Such grace, the good news, mga kapatid, uh, is also available to us. Depend on the sufficiency of the grace of God. The gospel-centered life involves bearing shame, and suffering in the name of Christ, while it could seem that the odds are stacked up against us because of adversity, marami tayong kinakaharap because of our faith in Christ. Take comfort because it does not. For God guards His church, assures His people in Christ, and empowers us through His Spirit that we may courageously persist against all odds. Let us come before the Lord in prayer. Our Holy Father in Heaven, O oh God, we may encounter a lot of adversities in various levels and, and in various forms, but we know that You are so gracious that You would uphold us up until the point of death. And Lord, when we encounter such trials, may we learn to, to be reminded at lagi po ninyo kami paalalahanan to look to the Savior who has suffered a greater humiliation that, that, that the things that we are su suffering at the moment pales in comparison 
to what he has done for us. And because of his finished work, O oh Lord, we can be we can be confident, we can be assured, and we can ground our trust and assurance upon you, our God and Savior. And this is um, in this we pray, O oh God, in your most holy name. Amen. Amen.